so it is packing time. So everything is in boxes, really, as you can see, most things boxed up. There's some stuff in here. TV. Uh, just gonna start packing everything now for in the morning, because we're gonna leave at like 5 a.m. So I have arrived in London to a new place. It's not sorted out yet, but I've tried all my bits in with the help of mother. Just a quick look around so you can see the gist of the place. I now, well, I'm gonna go get food, but then what I'm gonna do is buy some furniture. Absolutely exhausted. So I've been out, I've bought most of the things that I need for my flat. It's like a little boy waiting for Christmas. But yeah, I'll show you the state of things. So, as you can see, there's some furniture that I've bought and these put together. There's the remnants of my shop. So, my bed's made. I think I've managed to put most of my clothes. Yeah, most of my clothes are put away. I've just got, as you can see, all these boxes of unbuilt furniture everywhere and obviously the bathroom's full of it as well that I need to put together. I think my next project is going to be the TV, sorting that out with a the procrastinator. These are all the pieces for my TV stand. It's made out of glass and metal, which isn't ideal because it's quite heavy. And these are quite, I don't know, not very stable. And that is 100% not gonna fit in that gap unless I put it aside. So we're gonna see what that looks like. Okay, so this is what we've achieved. <laughs> so putting it at an angle, I'm just intrigued as to, let's see. What does it look like from bed? If I go on this side, it's no issue. If I'm on this side of the bed, you're losing part of your TV. What did for moving it out a little bit more? I don't think it looks stupid. Um, and I've hidden the box behind it. I need to find a way to make it less noticeable. I don't know, maybe decorate around it. So you've got a desk, a bed, a TV, and a lot of mess. And still a lot more to do. I think next is going to be the desk chair. So here we go, as we enter, and there's this little, I don't know, a little hallway bit, which was handy when I was moving in because I was literally just piling boxes and boxes full of recycling there before I could be bothered to take it out. And I bought these two over door hooks just to hang some coats and bags on. And I bought this coat the other day, which I'm amazed with. It's like a standard, you know, smart work coat. But then it's got like this hood on it that you can zip out. I was gobsmacked because it makes it a bit more practical and you can dress it down a bit. Anyway, on your right as you come in, I've got this IKEA Calyx unit. Ooh, let's push that one in. Yeah, got this IKEA Calyx unit, which is so easy to build and such a good piece of furniture. I've got the two drawers down at the bottom. Photo from my graduation there and just a collection of some of my books here. And then on top, I've got obviously the standard Ikea Fezhka, however you say it, plan. So I dumped my key. I'll try link all the furniture, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows this piece anyway. And then as we go, we got this massive double mirrored wardrobe, which is the best piece of storage. So I'm so happy for this because obviously it's a bit empty this side, most of my other clothes that side, but it needs a bit of a tidy, but you can literally fit everything you need in one, and then it's nice and out of the way, nice and tidily. And this was the area of contention for me that I was a bit concerned with, because I wasn't too sure from the photos whether my TV would fit in this gap. And obviously behind here, where you can see a box, is where the TV ports are. Not that I'm going to use it. And yet my TV didn't fit. But I worked around it by taking this raggedy drawers that came with the property, pulling it out slightly and putting the TV on it. And I was concerned it would look stupid, but I don't think it looks awful in the room. And it makes it a lot more practical for seeing it from my bed. And then I've just, as you saw a second ago, I'm using it for storage. I've got the TV box behind it. 
this bit here looks a bit messy having that there, but that's my clothes area. I just need to sort it out inside there so I can sort it out. Um, but I had to buy this universal TV bracket as I lost the legs for the TV. And I think they would have been too wide anyway. Down here on the floor, this is my favorite investment. Though I still need to flatten it out a bit or maybe get some tape down here just to help it stay down from where it's rolled up. But this is from Ikea. I think it was only about 25 pound. And I really love like these old fashioned sort of rugs. And this is like a really distressed looking one. I was concerned that it might stand out in the room but obviously it's green, so green is pretty neutral because it matches with obviously the plants and it's a very, like I said, distressed green, so it almost fades into like a grey. Okay, so over here on my big windowsill, I finally got this thing from Ikea because I've always thought it looked cool. This is the little urn I store my receipts and just random junk that I've literally bought from a charity shop when I was a kid and I don't know. I very much attached to it. Candles, fake plants because I kill non-fake ones because I'm not a good plant parent. Now over here is, I've got a game chair, not that I'm a gamer, but whenever I have a desk I'm just really bad at sitting at them because I just find it really uncomfortable. So I thought a gaming chair would be a lot more comfortable and it is. It's quite large and it is really cosy and it was really simple to put together. Um, it was hard trying to pick it when I went into Curry's because the staff in there were probably the furthest thing from helpful at the time. But yeah, I worked way around it. But this is what I'm gonna be filming like most of my eating vlogs from, as you can see. There's my channel there, don't forget to subscribe. This little box is where I just keep all my like camera bits and bags and chargers, some pens in that little trash can, etc. And I bought some those cup things that you put your cups on, so I don't ruin all my nice new white furniture. This table as well, um, that's from IKEA. It's just you buy the tabletop separately and then the four legs. I think it costs about seventeen pound all in all. It was so easy to build. Then we got the bed, which is. Nice and minimalist, there's no headboard on it, which I quite like the look of. When I was looking at flats, you find a lot of them have these really ugly beds and lots of them like with these really cheap looking wooden frames, which means that like if you buy furniture, it's all going to be, you know, clashing and it's not going to look very conducive, if that's the right word to use. Um, so I was quite happy with this because it means I can give it a nice little minimalist look and it's nothing that's an eyesore. And I don't know, I don't really need... The headboard, I kind of like the vibe it gives off. Now over here we've got obviously the bamboo plant from the back of all my older videos. All, all my videos actually. This was, yeah, this was the eat hard part about moving is I didn't want to leave this behind. It wouldn't fit in my car, it wouldn't fit in my mum's car. So we had to take my granddad's car from him to move that because I didn't want to get rid of it. I'm very much attached to it but it's no longer going to sit in the back of my videos because although the ethernet port is here, I didn't want to have my desk there because you've got the double mirrors there. So like the back of the frame will be a mirror and I don't know how, I don't think that will look very good. So I put the desk on that side because then you can have the TV in the back, which is a little less reflective, still reflective when I have the light on, I imagine. So we'll have to try work around that. Obviously a drink that I'm drinking at the moment. The book that I'm reading at the moment, I bought it about five years ago, four or five years ago, and just didn't read it. It was just in a box before I bought it to try to get myself into reading. And then once I did get into reading properly during the pandemic and absolutely tore through a load of these books. It's the first fiction book that I'm actually reading and I'm quite enjoying it. And I do find Norse mythology to be really interesting. But here is the salt lamp from obviously my old room. I spoke about that in probably my first flat tour back when I was in university. I was concerned with the orange trim on the gaming chair because I was thinking, well, that's not very neutral. So is it going to make it really stand out in the room and make it look a bit, I don't know, ugly? But obviously the orange from the salt lamp works off of that. It's only subtle, but it doesn't make it look obscure. But yeah, I'm... Really happy with the room, especially for the price that I'm paying for it in London. I'll discuss all that at the end of the video. 
but it's nice and spacious, plenty of storage, obviously. I bought all these additional Ikea bits of furniture. I think pretty much everything is from Ikea. Bar that, which is from Curry's, and that closer era, which was from Argos, because it was the cheapest one I could find. Um, anyway, bathroom. So, excuse the bathroom. I recently had a shower, so the shower is a bit wet. It doesn't look too bad on camera, actually. So, nice big mirror. My only issue with the bathroom is there wasn't really any storage. So I bought, I don't know, I thought it looked quite cool, this little trolley thing from Ikea, which fits nice and cosily down there with the bin next to it and my scales underneath. And that just stores everything I need. I've got my clothes basket, which is full at the moment. I need to do some laundry. From back at home, I've got this mat. What do you call it? A bathroom mat. I remember seeing it on a video that I watched and I had to track it down and I found quite a few. They were quite expensive online, but if you go into B&M, if you look at the B&M near you, has them in stock, I think it's like 6 99 whereas online they're like 15 to £30, pounds, all the online ones. I think they do them in Urban Outfitters as well. I think theirs is like £30, pounds, so so much better picking up one from Urban Outfitters and I, I just like it. So over here, this looks a bit messy at the moment. I've just got some cleaning products down there. I need to get a toilet bowl holder. I'm in no rush because it can just chill there for now. There's the double shower. I forgot to get something to hang all that on. I think when my family come and visit again or someone with a car comes and visits me, I'll get them to take me to Ikea because I missed it when I was doing my shop. You can get like those hanging baskets that you hook over where you can store your bathroom stuff. That is what I wanted, but I bought so much stuff in Ikea, I missed it. And by the time I realized I had far too much stuff to be walking backwards. So I just, yeah, I gave up. So as I promised, let's discuss the pricing. So here in London, actually, I got, it's an absolute bargain. So I'm paying £765 a month and that's all bills included. And obviously that's just for this room, but it's an ensuite room. It's a lot more rent than I've ever paid anywhere else back in obviously other places I've lived, such as Bristol. But it is to be expected in London. And this is a pretty good price in London for the size of the room with an ensuite storage and the location as well. The location's excellent. Like, I'm, Literally such a close walk to the nearest station and all the local amenities are amazing near me. So I couldn't be happier. I've been here for almost two weeks now and I'm so happy, you know. So happy I made the decision to move to London. I was a bit skeptical at first because of the costs, but I think it pays for itself in the sort of access to things you have. And realistically, if I wasn't living in London, I'd probably live by myself whereas I'm currently in a free bed sharing with two other professionals. And if I was to live by myself, I'd probably be paying a similar amount for a full property. So yes, I get more value for my money, but my living costs would still be the same. But then I earn a lot more living in London, but I just don't get as much personal space. But no, the people I share with are fine, you know, both nice guys, both professionals. I was very particular in what I was looking for. I used the app Spare Room, if any of you have ever heard of it. So it's an app that's very popular for professionals and students in places like London because you rent out just individual rooms rather than properties, though there are properties on them. And there's certain sort of filters that you can apply. And for me, I categorically did not want to be anywhere near students or with a student. Um, so I filtered that out. I wanted to exclusively be with um, professionals and my location, your costs. So it worked out for me ideally because I was able to pick a property where I was only shared with professionals in a certain location, etc. And I was just renting the room. So no, it's, it's worked out really well for me and I'm really happy about it. But no, that is the end of my video. I think yeah that's the end of my video don't forget to like and subscribe for more i'll probably post another video in the future once i've updated some things done some more changes but until then you're probably just going to see me eat a lot of food anyway until next time